we thought for a long time that once you have it and you're done with it but uh, it turns out that that's not the case there are thousands of patients now complaining of the fact that uh, they have persistent symptoms the, the fever goes away and you know all the other symptoms the cough and other things and now they're developing other kinds of symptoms the more common ones seem to be that they have this brain fog chronic fatigue malaise lymphadenopathy so these symptoms are reminiscent of uh, what we call as MECFS and that's not all that surprising because a lot of viral infections have been associated with this syndrome These things are happening later in the course uh, of the infection, suggesting that there's an immune component to it. So, you know, the virus goes down and the immune system gets hyperactive and uh, it can cause a variety of different types of neurological symptoms. And oftentimes, they, you know, we. By the time you see the patient, you don't really know what infection they had, and the virus is never figured out, and you know, and it's too late to figure out what virus they have. Now that's not an excuse any longer. You know exactly what virus caused it, and you know exactly the, what the syndrome is, and you know exactly what happened in between. So I think it's a an unfortunate situation, but you can use it to your advantage to try and understand these diseases that we haven't been able to for a long, long time. The study is composed of two cohorts, uh, patients who are acutely ill, who would be followed from the time of the onset of their symptoms into, out to one year. Uh, and then we'll be getting patients from who've been treated at the outside hospitals uh, who would be uh, enrolled after their acute illness and to see again the consequences in terms of their cardiac, their pulmonary function, as well as their kidney function, renal function. We're really trying to enroll not just the critically ill patients, we're very interested in also the, the young person who might have an infection, they lose their sense of smell and taste, they have a fever, they feel kind of like they've had a bad flu and they get better. So those people are very interesting to look at simply because what are the consequences? How did they get better? Uh, and how does that differ from, uh, from someone in a similar age group who, um, who doesn't get better and who deteriorates and requires an ICU admission.